Thanks for tuning into this video about the DJI M30T. My name is Bill Bongle and I'm a retired police officer. In 2015, I started my own business, Titletown Drones. I created this YouTube channel to help public safety professionals identify and understand the latest drone technology. So just a few things before we get started. By the time you see this video, DJI will have released the new Mavic 3 Enterprise series. So always something new and exciting. As soon as I get my hands on one, I'll do another review. I'm not being paid to make these videos. Any of the products that you see are items that I've purchased with my own funds for my own business. However, full disclosure, I am a dealer. I do sell DJI Enterprise and Autel Enterprise products. I also sell Fox Fury lighting products. If you're in the market for any of these items, please feel free to contact me. I work with a lot of public safety agencies throughout the whole United States. Finally, I want to thank you, my viewers, for helping me achieve my first YouTube milestone of 1,000 subscribers. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. That way you'll be notified when I create additional videos. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll always answer your comments. I know your time is valuable, so let's get started. And this is Bill with Titletown Drones. We're out here today at a local park. We're going to test the DJI M30T. In a previous video, we compared these two drones, the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced and the Autel Evo 2 Enterprise 640T. In this video, we're going to talk about the DJI M30T, the newest addition to DJI's Enterprise fleet. One of the questions we want to answer today is, is the M30T worth the additional cost? The other units that I've demonstrated previously were anywhere from the seven to roughly $10,000 range, somewhere in there. The M30T is coming in at about 14,000 plus some extra costs for batteries. So anywhere between 14 and 16,000. A little bit more expensive, but uh, I think you'll be impressed with the additional features and the capabilities of this drone. Today, we're gonna to talk about those extra capabilities and let you make the decision if you think this is worth the extra money. Okay, you'll notice that the airframe has buttons on the arms here. Those are mechanisms that will lock into place once we open up the arms. So I'll deploy those front two. We'll just move those propellers out and then we'll do the front here. And you'll notice that that little button will just pop out of there and then flip this down. So here in less than a minute, you can go ahead and deploy this aircraft. Redundant power systems, having two batteries in there, occasionally a battery can go bad or not hold the charge the way that it should. Having dual batteries in there, redundant power, gives you extra assuredness that the aircraft isn't gonna just come down unexpectedly. It gives you plenty of time warning for you to get back and change out the batteries. So redundancy is always a good thing with any type of an aircraft. And the ability to hot swap those batteries to get you back up in the air faster. On the top we have a strobe that's built into the aircraft so there's no need to attach one. And then there's also another on the bottom. You can also see there are two landing lights on the bottom. Uh, the strobes being built into the aircraft so there's no need to add extra strobe lights to meet the part 107 capabilities for nighttime operations even during daylight having a strobe light can offer increased visibility makes it a little bit easy for your ground crew and pilot to keep an eye on the aircraft in an array of sensors optical sensors and infrared sensors on the side we have additional sensors and we have obstacle avoidance sensors on the rear and on the front. The airframe is also equipped with an FPV camera. So FPV stands for first person view. So first person view gives you always a forward looking view from the drone. So regardless of the direction that this camera is pointing, uh, a pilot sometimes can get disoriented if you're trying to fly the drone around uh, with your perspective thinking that this is the way that you're aiming where the drone actually is pointed this way. So the FPV camera allows for the pilot to always re regain orientation by looking forward. The one thing that uh, we are missing on this unit uh, as it comes stock is we do not have a speaker or a searchlight mounted on here. However, this drone does have accessory port and a capability to add that as an accessory. So there is a, a third party manufacturer that produces pretty impressive searchlight and speaker 
that uh, will actually synchronize itself with the gimbal so the searchlight is pointed the same direction as the camera. So that's really a great feature. Uh, so that is a capability that you can add to this, but it does not come stock. In my opinion, this camera system is superior to anything in this class of drone, these foldable, collapsible, portable types of drones, superior zoom capabilities. You'll see in the sample video that I'm providing what the zoom capabilities are. You're able to see small objects from a long distance away. You can have the drone parked at a great distance and still be able to see something. You'll be able to monitor a situation without having to be right on top of it. Or if it's a fire and you don't want to get too close to it or other, some, some other sort of hazardous type of situation, you can park the drone far away and you can zoom in on it to still see what's going on. That will help you fly safer and prevent a collision with a fixed object like a tower or a building or something like that. It's equipped with the laser range finder that helps you determine exactly how close you are to fixed objects. It has a wide angle camera to give you that overall view of your scene. It has a zoom capable camera that's capable of zooming in on even very small objects like a license plate or a scene of some kind. The zoom capabilities are quite impressive. Optical zoom up to 16x, but the digital zoom is really quite good and can actually get in up to 200. Being able to see a license plate from a thousand feet away is definitely within the capabilities of this drone. And finally, one of the most important features to public safety operations is the quality of the thermal camera. The quality of the thermal imaging system on this drone is excellent. It has a lot of capabilities. The thermal sensor size is 640 by 512, which is currently the highest resolution available on the market. However, DJI has added a new feature called Infrared Image Super Resolution. When enabled in the Pilot app, this feature essentially doubles the resolution of the thermal images. While it is true this is done through software, the end product is a higher resolution image. The ability to drop virtual pins. If you're out conducting a search, the drone pilot sees something of interest, you can drop a virtual pin. It will record the GPS coordinates of that location, and then your ground crew can go back to it later, or you can go back to it later with the drone. So that is a really terrific feature for search and rescue and any type of an inspection where you're trying to notate certain things of interest. Okay, next I'd like to talk to you about this remote controller. This is the new RC Plus. This is a huge improvement over the original Enterprise remote controller that came with the Mavic 2 Enterprise series. You can see not only is the screen much larger, but we have a lot of additional uh, buttons and functions and capabilities on this one. In addition, you'll notice these rubber boots here too. So this unit is also IP rated for weather resistance. So you could potentially have this remote controller outside in the elements, out in the rain. We have three control buttons over here, and the functions of these buttons depends upon which camera you're in, which camera view that you're using at the time. So each one of these buttons has multiple functions. So we have a return to home, we have a back button, we have a, the power switch here, and then we have a multi-function switch here. Uh, and we've got a couple of uh, programmable function buttons on the back of the remote controller. Uh, one other excellent feature, I believe, is the ability to add an auxiliary battery. So I've opened up this little trap door in the back here. I have room for an extra battery here. So this is DJI's WB37. This particular battery is also used in the Crystal Sky. And also there is a power source built into the remote. So when you buy this remote, you have the remote with the built-in power source that will last you roughly three hours. You could use this auxiliary battery to add an extra three hours of operating time to this remote controller. This incidentally is hot swappable, so you could be up in the air and swap this battery out and keep this remote in operation. Under this little trap door here, we can remove those two screws and access a port in there where we can install a dongle for data. So you can do 4G and actually have cellular connectivity. Incidentally, these antennas are user replaceable. So if we have a mishap and we need to replace one of these, we have the ability to purchase these extra antennas, replace those if need be, rather than having to send that in. On the bottom of the remote, we have two ports here where we could use a lanyard. 
This system also includes a battery charging station with the kit that will hold up to eight batteries. It'll charge two at a time, but it charges them rapidly so it can get you back up in the air quickly. In addition, there's ports here to charge some of the auxiliary batteries for the remote controller and also a USB device. Having this charging system included with your kit gives you increased capabilities to keep that aircraft airborne without having to purchase an extra charging system of some kind. There are three settings for charging the batteries. There's a storage charge, which is roughly 50%. Then you have what's called ready to fly, which brings them up to 90%. And then finally, fully charged at 100% is the third setting. One of the things I really like about this system is how quickly I can deploy it. Okay, let's do a simulation, see how long it's actually gonna take to deploy this drone. Get my remote out, and I think I'll power that on right away so that can start booting. Deploy the antennas on that. All right, now I'll get the arms ready for deployment. Lock those into place. Make sure that those little buttons come on up. Okay, I believe that has booted up and that's ready to go. All right, and I'm just gonna flip that camera down and I am ready to go set it on the launch pad. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and power on. Okay. Okay, I'm just waiting for my boot screen here. I'm getting a warning of some kind. We'll let that clear. All right, everything is all cleared up. We're ready to launch. So I'll hit my camera view, do my quick systems check here. We are good to go. The next feature that makes this aircraft stand out is the IP55 water resistance. Being able to operate this aircraft in adverse weather gives you additional capabilities. We all know that, especially during public safety operations, the weather can be less than ideal. Uh, having the ability to operate this in wet weather like rain is an advantage over some of the other units that we've been using. In addition, the remote controller is also rated for water resistance. So having the pilot outdoors in inclement weather, the aircraft operating in inclement weather really improves your capabilities. Another thing that DJI offers is called the Enterprise Shield Program. It is a replacement program in case the aircraft is either damaged or just malfunctions. You can send it in and get it repaired quickly or get a replacement. There are two levels of protection with the Enterprise Shield. There's the basic and then there's the plus. The difference between these two plans is a deductible that you would pay if you sent it in under the basic plan, whereas under the Shield Plus plan, there is no deductible. You send it in, that repair is covered up to the value of the drone. As with any of these public safety drones, you really need to take a look at what capabilities you require for your operations, and then find a piece of equipment that checks most of those boxes. There isn't one drone out there that will do every single thing that you want it to do. So what we need to do is look at the capabilities of each system and then make a decision if this system is the best for our needs. Okay, that's just an overview of the M30T and what you can expect. I have some sample footage that I'm going to include at the end of this video to give you an idea of the capabilities of the thermal camera, laser rangefinder, zoom camera, and the wide angle camera.
So this is Bill with Title Town Drones. Stay safe and return to home. These are just the kind of go-getters I'm looking for for my M30 project. <laughs> <laughs>